Rebecca, thank you so much for uh, joining in the Hyperloop today and um, taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, of course, thanks for having me. And uh, thank you also for being the first uh, woman I've interviewed in the Hyperloop industry. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Great. Um, so who are you and uh, what is your organization? Well, I'm Rebecca Leonard. I'm president of the Hypernet Holding Corporation. We are a uh, corporation building 20,000 miles of Hyperloop tollways uh, across North America. Wow. Um, how did you get involved uh, and interested in the Hyperloop? Well, I, I am a, a, a certified planner, urban planner and city planner and also landscape architect. And so I'm always looking for ways of solving some of the challenges we have in, in cities. Um, and transportation is got, has got to be one of the number one challenges we have, uh, both just the capacity of transportation and, be, and being able to address the demand that people have to move around in their cities, and, uh, but also uh, in um, the, uh, the ability to do that in an affordable way. And so, you know, a couple solutions that people try is just building more and more roads. And that has enormous impacts on communities. Um, they, uh, they not only on the social network of the community, but also on the physical uh, design and development of the communities in which those roads are kind of blasting through. Right. Another option that cities have tried is, is mass transit, various forms of mass transit. And most of those require some level of government subsidy and, um, and as Americans, we just, you know, we feel like we're kind of drowning under the amount of subsidies uh, out there. And so Hyperloop uh, provided an opportunity for me, in my eyes, to uh, provide a transportation system that could be affordably built uh, and affordably operated and uh, be then affordable for all the users that would be using it. The other thing that was exciting about Hyperloop as compared to some of the other mass transit options mm -hmm. is that they've often struggled in the rural environments. You know, high speed, speed rail is um, uh, mainly a city project. It's connecting cities to cities. And so the rural spaces in between get left with a lot of impacts and not a lot of economic value from that new infrastructure. And as we've been seeing in the national politics, uh, that the rural areas have a very strong voice. And I think I, I think and I hope that Hyperloop will be a transportation technology that gives them value as well as the major cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. Um, as I'm, I'm located in Denver, Colorado, and uh, I believe you're in Texas. Um, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's this. I feel sometimes that Denver can be a flyover state, and um, uh, yeah. So I, I totally appreciate connecting kind of these far reaches. Um, yep. across great distances. Um, and one other reason I, I really wanted to jump in on the front end of this technology and get mm -hmm. involved is as, as a city planner and a city builder, mm -hmm. a lot of times technology evolves with, uh, and the cities have to adapt to them. And mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that by being part of this from the very beginning, that we can create a technology that, uh, that, that adapts to the cities instead of the mm -hmm. other way around. You know, something that fits like an old slipper. You're, you, you fit into yeah. an old slipper yeah. instead of having to jam it into cities. I want it to be a technology that really addresses the needs of communities. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So uh, speaking of cities, um, you know, what, what two cities or locations or parts uh, would you like to be connected? If you could just like... Now get at Hyperloop right now and connect those two? <laughs> well, uh, Hypernet Holding Corporation has stayed uh, fairly agnostic about, mm -hmm. you know, the first route or the best route or whatever. Uh, as I said, we're really, we're wanting to, we think the technology is most valuable when it's big and mm -hmm. it connects a lot of nodes. And so we want to work hard to build a network, a 20,000 plus mile network of mm -hmm. Hyperloop. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's kind of the towing the corporate line, but I will say that I live in Austin, Texas and go to Colorado frequently, so I selfishly am hoping for that route first. <laughs> nice. Can, how, how might people pay for this or how might this transportation be uh, affordable? 
Well, I think what's key is to spread the costs uh, among as many users as we can. And so much of what's been discussed around Hyperloop is an entity like a DOT or, uh, or a company uh, owning, building and owning the tubes, mm -hmm. uh, build, uh, buying and uh, owning the pods, and then operating a transit system in mm -hmm. here. Um, and as kind of a closed network. And we think by disconnecting those costs that it can actually help bring them down for everybody. Mm. So, it, so this 20,000 mile network that we're talking about of tollway Hyperloop um, mm. would take away all those costs and all the headaches of having to go through environmental reviews and right of way acquisition and all of that um, from the operations of a transit system. And uh, the more and more users we can tack, in, tack on to that, uh, that network, that 20,000 mile network, the, the more and more costs are spread. So we could spread it amongst many transit systems that are trying to put people through uh, the Hyperloop. Also share it with cargo. Um, also share it perhaps with other um, utilities that some of which we're going to need, like intense uh, information and communication technology and also electric transmission and, and things. And so if we are able to piggyback some of these uh, other users onto our system, mm -hmm. all of that helps um, spread the costs around more. We've got a vision that we don't believe is going to take any government subsidies. What we, uh, our expectations from the government would be that it, they would help us um, secure the Hyperloop. So, you know, it, it would be a critical infrastructure for, mm -hmm. uh, for mobility in the country. And so we would want them to take the same care that they do with the U.S. highway system, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but we also would like them to buy capacity, <laughs> you know, be pre-sale capacity in the Hyperloop. And so if, if, uh, if military operations would like to buy some uh, capacity in here for times like we've experienced recently in, in, in Texas with, the, mm -hmm. with uh, Hurricane Harvey, mm -hmm. to be able to get equipment in and relief personnel in and evacuated, you know, evacuated people out, uh, mm -hmm. that, that would really help us then go attract private financing for uh, the Hyperloop, HyperNet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, that's really interesting. I, I, um, I try to envision how uh, it might change how government or people do business, uh, but that's a really fascinating use case scenario. Um, mm -hmm. So how can people support um, you and the hypernet? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, it's, a, it's a giant task, 20,000 miles of hypernet uh, tollways. So uh, prayers, first of all, but also um, check out our website, uh, www.hypernetnow.com. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some ideas on there. We, we are still uh, working on identifying and connecting with some key strategic partners. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be looking for some pioneer customers in uh, various categories. Um, and then we also need you know, to partner with technology firms and, and uh, product manufacturers for uh, several of the, uh, the, the um, actual hardware that we'll mm. need to build the, the mm. hybrid. And so we're connecting with all kinds of vendors right now to make that happen. And mm. then finally, uh, if you uh, have the desire to get in on the ground floor, we are uh, raising funds. We've got uh, an investment package that I'd be happy to send people if they're uh, interested. Oh, super. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for, for coming on the show. And um, I want to wish you and the rest of your group uh, the best of luck. Thank you so much, Blake. Have a good day.